हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा प्रभु माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभ जय गोपी जन वल्लभानंदन व्रज जन यशोदानंदन व्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरा यमुना तीरा
So Hare Krishna, this evening we are reading from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 5, verse will be 21. So there is some fault with my video camera, so you can see the screen. So I'll read the verse first. Bhaya svarshasva asaktatma vindati atmani yat sukham sa brahma yoga yuktatma sukham akshayam ashnute Bhaya svarshasva asaktatma vindati atmani yat sukham sa brahma yoga yuktatma sukham akshayam ashnute Bhaya svarshasva ashaktatma vindatya atmani yat sukham sa brahma yoga yuktatma sukham akshayam asnute. Synonyms. Bhaya svarshasva in the external sense pleasure. Asaktatma, one is not so attached. Vindati enjoys in the self. Yet that which sukham happiness saha that Brahma Yoga concentrated in Brahma Yukta Atma self connected sukham happiness akshayam unlimited ashnute enjoys translation and purport by His Divine Grace Sila Ek Si Bhakti Ki such a liberated person is not attracted to material sense pleasure or external objects but is always in trance enjoying the pleasure within in this way the self-realized person enjoys unlimited happiness for he concentrates on the supreme purport sri yamnacharya a great duty in krishna consciousness said Yadavati mama cheta krishna padara vinde nava nava rasa dhamyata ramantama seed tadavati patanari sangame smaraya mane bhavati mukha vikara shustu nishitvanam cha. Since I have been engaged in this transcendental loving service of Krishna, realizing ever new pleasure in Him. Whenever I think of sex pleasure, I spit at the thought and my lips curl with distaste. A person in Brahma Yoga or Krishna consciousness is so absorbed in the loving service of the Lord that he loses his taste for material sense pleasure altogether. The highest pleasure in terms of matter is sex pleasure. The whole world is moving under its spell. And, he, and a materialistic materialist cannot work at all without this motivation. But a person engaged in Krishna consciousness can work with great vigor without sex pleasure, which he, he avoids. That is the test in spiritual realization. Spiritual realization and sex pleasure go ill together. A Krishna conscious person is not attracted to any kind of sense pleasure due to his being a liberated person. Om Ajnana Timirantasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Gitam Vena Tasmai Sri Guru Venama Si Chaitanya Mano Vistam Sapitam Vena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadati Swa Pradantikam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithyananda Si Advaita Gadadara Si Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So in this uh, fifth chapter, now we are in the last part. So from verse 17 until 28, Krishna is explaining the symptoms of a self-realized soul. And what we see in the purport, what Prabhupada explains, that one who is absorbed in Krishna consciousness loses taste for sense pleasure. And also Krupada explains that the test in spiritual life, one can work with great vigor without sex pleasure. That is what Krupada explains. So this is a very important verse. And in this verse, the words Sukham Akshayam, which comes in the fourth line. So now most of you must have heard Akshayam. Like we have Akshay Tritiya. 
So Akshay Tritya, like it comes in the month of May, and in on that day people buy gold, many other things they do. Akshay means that will never perish. Also in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has word used a word equivalent that is called Avayam, Raj Vidya Raj Guyam. In the end, it is called Avayam, means which eternally continues. So now here, basically what we see, Krishna is explaining that a person who is self-contained, such a person is not attracted by all external material pleasures. And also what we see in Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, that in the end, so Arjuna has asked once Krishna that uh, what is the symptom of a person who, whose consciousness is merged in transcendence? Sita pradnasya ka bhasha samadhi sthita se keshava sthita dhi kim prabhakshita kim asita rajeta kim. So what Arjuna asked Krishna was that what are the symptoms of a person, uh, one whose consciousness is thus merged in transcendence? How does he speak? What is his language? How does he sit? And how does he talk? So in answer to this, this uh, what Krishna explains, that prajahati yada kaman sarvan partha manogatan atmanet atma tushtati sthita pradnasya tadochate. Uh, what Krishna explains, that o partha, a man gives up all varieties of sense desires which arise from mental concoction. And when his mind find satisfaction in the self alone, then he is said to be in pure transcendental consciousness. One is not disturbed in spite of threefold miseries, who is not elated when there is happiness, and who is free from attachment, fear and anger, is called a sage of steady mind. He who is without attachment, who does not rejoice when he obtains good, nor laments when he obtains evil, is firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. What Prabhupada explains that the test of a yogi or devotee or self-realized soul is that he is able to control the senses according to his plan. And what Prabhupada explains, most people, however, are servant of the senses and are thus directed by the dictation of the senses. That this is what we understand in the material world. So further Krishna explains that Though the embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, the taste for sense objects remains. But seizing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste, he is fixed in consciousness. And if we see in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the first canto, seventh chapter, Sud Goswami, he explains in one very nice verse, uh, wherein he explains, Atma Ramasya Munayo Nirgrantha Apya Urukrame Purvantya Haikutam Bhaktim Itham Bhuto Guno Hare. All different varieties of Atma Ramas, whose, those who take pleasure in the Atma or self, spirit self, especially those established on the path of self-realization, though freed from all kinds of material bondage, desire to render unannoyed devotional service unto the personality of Godhead. This means that the Lord possesses transcendental qualities and therefore can attract everyone, including liberated souls. So now in today's world, in the first half, what Krishna explains is of Atma Rama. Atmaram is the devotees of the Lord who are and content in the self, not in the self. That means they are content in serving the Lord. And in the Bhagavatam, we have countless examples like four Kumaras, Narad Muni, Vyasdev, Bharat Maharaj, Rishabdev, then Nar Narayan, Jad Bharat. And we see in the Bhagavatam that Sukhdev Goswami, it is mentioned that Actually, it's a big story. To make it short, Sukhdev Goswami was in the womb of his mother for almost 16 years. And he didn't want to come out. Whereas there, he all the way went to Dwarka and he petitioned Krishna that my son doesn't want to come out. He's feared, fearful of Maya. 
so krishna had to come at badrikashram and krishna he came and he gave him the assurance that yes he will not be affected by his maya so on krishna's assurance it is mentioned that sukhdev goswami when he was born he was 16 years old youth and immediately he lost the taste for his house and household fare at familia and immediately he left the home and while he was going in the forest as they was calling for his son from behind he was running but sadhya goswami when he was going through different places at one place some river somewhere some women they were bathing without clogs so they were not affected by sukhdev goswami is walking through that path because they could understand this person is completely above brahma bhuta prasanna like that but when they saw the moment they saw as they were coming so immediately they went and put on their clogs so what we see that also in the bhagavatam 11th canto there is a mention of king purura if you see in the 11th canto that is mentioned that king purura got attracted so much by the beauty of urvashi that almost he was dying without urvashi and what happened he did everything to attain urvashi so much struggle he had to undergo but ultimately when he came to know it's not possible to attain her uh, he wanted to uh, go to the planet where urvashi was living so ultimately it is mentioned in the 11th canto that a time came he got self realized mukta sango mahim eta atma aram chara chara losing his desire to be on the same planet as urvashi maharaj purura to began to wander the earth free of all material association and completely satisfied within the self so in material world what we see some people it may take time for them and uh, in the chaitan charita amrit we have like shri haridas thakur so haridas thakur what we see when he was living in fulia that time there was uh, one kazi by name ramchandra khan and he wanted that haridas thakur to be prosecuted so he was planning so many ways and ultimately he got one prostitute she said yes i can go and have association with haridas and i can make him fall down from the path so what we see this prostitute she came for three nights where haridas was staying and on the third night she got converted and also further it is mentioned in the chaitanya charita amrit a time came maya devi herself she came and we can imagine maya devi her beauty no can compare and even in that situation also haridas thakur was not carried away so what prabhupad <coughs> explains that the devotees in krishna consciousness they can work without sex pleasure so they they need not to undergo all this material suffering and also this actually what we see krishna explains in this verse those who are self satisfied self satisfied means who are content in serving krishna they are called atma ram and also in the chaitanya charita amrit one time chaitanya mahaprabhu he was speaking with sarva bhava bhattacharya and he gave 64 different meanings to this one word atma ram now bhagavad gita there are a good number of verses wherein krishna explains about his devotees who are almost on the atma ram planet like in the 10th ch- chapter he explains machit madgata prana bodavent parasparam kathayantasya ma mittam tushyanti cha ramanti cha that the thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me their lives are fully devoted to my service and they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me also in the ninth chapter krishna explains mahatmanas tu maam parth daivim prakrishin ashita bhajanya ananya manso gyatva maam shanti prachati 
uh, oh son of Partha, those who are not deluded, the great souls are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the supreme person Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Uh, we see when the six Goswamis, they were living in Vrindavan. So there is one story explained about Sanatan, uh, sorry, Rup Goswami. So it is mentioned that one time Rup Goswami, he was meditating under, underneath a tree and he was meditating on Golok Vrindavan, what is happening over there. And it is mentioned that Krishna was strolling with Radharani and while strolling, they came across a big tree, huge tree, and which had very nice ripened one fruit called Jamu. So Ravani, seeing those fruits, she got very much elated and she wanted to pick some fruits, but the tree was a little high. So what Krishna told Ravani, okay, you stand below, I'll go and put the branch down with my bodily weight. So you pluck as many fruits you like. So this way Krishna, he climbed the tree and he somehow pulled the branch, one branch, big branch. He put it down and Radharani held that branch by one hand and with one hand she was pluck, pluck, plucking the fruits, jamun fruits. So Krishna, what happened? Suddenly he lifted his leg and what happened? The branch went up again to its normal position and Radhani was hanging in between. So seeing this, Rup Goswami, he started laughing. So actually the story is big. Just to make it short, uh, what we see, the devotees of the Lord, those who are on the higher level, although they are in the material world, so they are not carried away by this material sense pleasures. So, Rup Goswami explains in Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu one nice verse. Uh, he <coughs> explains similar to verse what is today Prabhupada mentions in the purport, the Yamnacharya, what he explains. So, there is another similar verse which mentions that Kama dinam katina katida palita dukne desha desham jata mina karuna na tarta na poshiranti. So it is mentioned that, O oh my Lord, there is no limit to the unwanted orders of my lusty desires. Although I have rendered these desires so much service, they have not shown any mercy to me. I have not been ashamed to serve them nor have I even desired to give them up. Oh my Lord, I heard of the Yadu dynasty recently. However, my intelligence has been awakened and now I am giving up them. Due to transcendental intelligence, I now refuse to obey the unwanted orders of these desires. And I now come to you to surrender myself at your fearless lotus feet. Kindly engage me in your personal service and save me. So here, what we see that yes, we should know that material senses, especially the five working senses or knowledge gathering senses, uh, they will never be content because the mind is the ultimate and the mind, it is Krishna explains, mana eva manushana karna bandha moksha. So this way, one devotee, he should understand that because of our mind, we are again and again entangled in the material world. But when we take inspiration from other devotees, our acharyas, the Goswamis, then we come to know what exactly is the difference between the lust, material lust and spiritual love. There is a big difference between the spiritual love and the material love. Material love is, is, is a perverted reflection. It is like an iron. And spiritual love is like that of gold. So in Chaitanya Chaitamrit, Krishnadas Kavraj Goswami, he mentions uh, nice verses in the four, Adi Leela, fourth chapter, 
ಗೋಪಿ ಗಣೇರ ಪ್ರೇಮೇರ ರುದ್ಧ ಭಾವ ನಾಮ ವಿಶುದ್ಧ ನಿರ್ಮಲ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಕಬುನ ಹೇ ಕಾಮ ದ ಲಾ ಆಫ್ ಗೋಪೀಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ರುದ್ಧ ಭಾವ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಿವರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಪಾಟ್ಲೆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಎನಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಲಸ್ಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಹಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಸ್ ಆತ್ಮೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ವಾಂಚಾ ತಾರೆ ಬಲಿ ಕಾಮ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ಇಚ್ಛಾ ಧರೆ ಪ್ರೇಮ ನಾಮ the desire to gratify one's own senses is kama lust but the desire to please the senses of lord krishna is prema love further he explains ateva kama prema bhuta antara kama andha tama prema nirmala bhaskara therefore lust and love are quite different lust is like dense darkness but love is like the bright sun also he explains ಆರೈಕ ಗೋಪಿ ಪ್ರೇಮರ ಸ್ವಾಭಾವಿಕ ಚಿನ್ನ ಈ ಪ್ರಕಾರೇಹ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಕಾಮ ಗಂಧಹೀನ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗೋಪೀಸ್ ಲವ್ ದಟ್ ಶೋಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಅ ಟ್ರೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ವಿ ಅನೆ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ರೆಡ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಇನ್ ದ ಟೆಂತ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಸೀ ದಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ದ ಗೋಪೀಸ್ ದೇ ಡಿಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ the pleasure of krishna from their dressing uh, decorating their body everything and leaving their home uh, actually uddhava explains that the gopis the highest dharma he explains that arya dharma that gopis uh, they completely abandoned the arya dharma arya dharma means those who are highly cultured people their dharma is called arya dharma but the gopis they left everything just to please krishna and there is nice one nice story there was one person by name this is a true story his name was ras khan and about 350 years back uh, there are there were a few brajavasis they went to delhi to the do a bhagavat katha and the bhagavat katha kar while he was doing katha over there he saw one yonak he was serving a small kid taking complete care from morning until night so one day this bhagavat kar he commented on this person that material world we take care of so many people but there is no use so some of this ras khan he could understand uh, he was also within the vicinity over there he could understand this fellow is speaking about me so he became little annoyed and he came and he challenged him Uh, what you are speaking that you are speaking about me i can understand so the bhagavat kar he said do you know there is one lord by name gopal he is much much more more beautiful than what you are serving a materialistic person's son so if you happen to see gopal or if you happen to see or meet gopal then your life will be completely changed you will be a liberated person so now this ras khan he became very much curious he wanted to see gopal so in the olden time there was no camera or photocopy so fortunately that bhagavat kar he had a one canvas photo of gopal so he gave that photo to this ras khan and ras khan he promised that yes one day he will visit vrindavan and after some time he came to vrindavan and he was carrying that can was photo and he was asking all the people do you know where this chap lives where this gopal stays so this way he was roaming all the places so one day somebody told him yes this gopal you will find on the hill top of govardhan there is one temple there this gopal is there so ras khan he all the way went to govardhan and at gorghan he wanted to enter the temple on the hill top but somehow he was shooed away by the guard so but uh, ras khan what he thought okay maybe i am not qualified to enter this temple so he was sitting at govind kund so the evening was coming and the pujari he did all the rituals for the evening and when he was about to put the lord for sleeping so the lord told that pujari there is one devotee he is sitting at govindkund 
and he is very much uh, he wants to see me he wants to take my darshan so why don't you go and bring him so there was one devotee by name vithalnath so this vithalnath he went all the way and he was looking at govind kun so he saw this fellow he is looking like a fakir muslim so what he thought this is not a qualified person so he went and he told gopal ji i couldn't find there was one fakir so gopal said yes is bring that fakir so again <clears throat> he went over there and he told yes our gopal ji wants to see you so ras khan he was related he came and when he took the darshan of gopal ji he got completely mesmerized and he completely forgot about his family and other thing and now he started living in vrindavan so with the passing of years it is mentioned that he became so much an a immersed in krishna prema that he could see krishna's prakat leela prakat leela in the sense where exactly krishna is doing what what activity is doing so this way he composed a good number of uh, <clears throat> verses in braj bhasha and in one verse what he explains that these gopis of vrindavan they are the top most devotees of krishna because what he explains uh, from morning early morning after waking up what they do usually in vrindavan the gopis they collect all the cow dung then they do cow dung patties then they clean the house then they go to yamuna bathe bathe their kid then then bring water after that they go to the market then they buy some commodities vegetables like that they come they cook at home they offer that bhoga to the lord so in all these activities what the gopis they do they are always immersed in glorifying the <coughs> activities of the lord so often time you can see that while doing go godan parikrama sometimes some group of women uh, they keep singing different glories past times of lord krishna of vrindavan so this way what we see in one sense the love of the gopis for lord krishna it is a top most also there was one vaishnava acharya from south india his name was bil mangal thakur and bil mangal thakur was and a many people they, they there is a still some question where exactly he was from some they say he was from maharashtra some they say he was from bengal some they say he was from odisha some research work is going on but bil mangal thakur is mentioned that he was very much attracted to one prostitute and she was living across the river and her name was uh somehow uh chintamani her name was chintamani so what happened one day at house of bil mangal thakur his fathers uh, that ceremony was going on pitrupaksha ceremony and it was getting very late and being a bil mangal he was very much curious because the river was flooded and he wanted to cross the river so he abandoned the ceremony and he left home so it was very dark and somehow he couldn't find any boatman and somehow he jumped into the river and what he thought he has caught up a log of wood and he crossed the river but what he found it was a dead body so by the time he reached the house of chintamani what she thought yes today bil mangal will not come she went to sleep so he was banging at her door she was living on a on a upper floor so somehow he climbed the balcony and how he climbed with the help of a snake and then later on he realized it was a snake so when he entered the inner chambers of chintamani she was totally flabbergasted she was totally carried away seeing the pathetic condition of bil mangal thakur and suddenly what she said so you have so much attraction for this material body uh, which is made of mucus bile air 
So if at all you had that same, the same love for Lord Krishna, your life could have been a great success. So just hearing this, Bilu Mangal Thakur, he completely changed. And he took a direct path to Vrindavan. And what happened again while on the path, he got again attracted by a beautiful woman who was taking water at a well. So he followed her. Then what happened when she entered the house, the husband of that woman, he asked him, yes, what you are looking for? So by this time, Bill Mangal Thakur was feeling very much guilty. He said, I, why don't you give me the hairpins of your wife? So the householder, he told his wife, yes, this person is asking for your hairpins. So she gave and Bill Mangal Thakur, he completely plucked out his both eyes. He became blind and somehow he reached Vrindavan. Later on, what we see, he became such a big devotee. So in material world, what we see, often time we are being cheated by our senses. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains 18th chapter, Vishendriya Samyoga Yat Tad Agre Amrutpavam Parinaame Visham Yeva Sukham Rajasam Smritam what Krishna explains, that happiness which is derived from contact with senses, with their objects, uh, which appears like nectar at the first, but poison at the end, is said to be in the nature of passion. So what Prabhupada writes in the purport, a young man and a young woman meet, and the senses drive the young man to see her, to touch her, and to have sexual intercourse. In the beginning, this may be very pleasing to the senses, but at the end or after some time, it becomes just like poison. They are separated or there is divorce, there is lamentation, there is sorrow, etc. Such happiness is always in the mode of passion. Happiness derived from a combination of senses and sense objects is always the cause of distress and should be avoided by all beings. So what Prabhupada explains in the purport, Krishna consciousness and sex pleasure go ill together. And if we see analytically, if we analyze this, our material body, today's world, what Prabhupada explains, everyone is totally carried away by the enjoying mentality. So Manu Samita, somehow I couldn't find that verse. There is one nice verse uh, wherein it is mentioned the byproducts of our body. Uh, our body, what it mentions, it has so many disgusting elements. And if we analyze, like our body is made of five gross elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. So basically our body has three main matters, mucus, bile, air. Then other ingredients like stool, urine, gas, pus, blood, vomit, perspiration, tears, uh, then wax, foul air, then hair, nails, skin, bones, fat, marrow, semen, then uric acid. If we make this list, list very, is very big. And also this body has 12 urges. As per Ayurveda, our body has 12 urges. There's a urge of hunger, answering nature call, passing urine, sleep, sleeping urge, sneezing, vomiting, belching, passing foul air, thirst, rapid breathing, yawning, then discharging semen. These are the 12 urges of this material body. And material world, what we see, uh, we are being fascinated by this body. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he used to explain a story of a liquid beauty. So that story was also many times, Prabhupada, he spoke about this story. So this is a very nice instructive story from the collection of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. It is called Liquid Beauty. A prince was attracted by a beautiful woman and he wanted to get married to her, but the girl was not interested in marrying him. But I do not find anyone else as beautiful as you. I have decided to marry you only 
and no one else. So oh, you are so much attracted to my beauty. Then meet me at this same place after one week. So during this time, the week, this woman took some medicines and was constantly vomiting and passing stool. She collected all that in one pot. Exactly after one week, the prince came to meet her. So did you see a young beautiful woman around here? I am same girl. Uh, who asked you to meet here today? But the prince was shocked. She was so beautiful and you are so ugly. You are not that woman. So I have stored all my beauty in these pots. You can have a look at it. So this woman, she took him inside the house and she showed him the various pots, stool, urine, pus, mucus, like that. So the purple Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati just mentioned this man's position was similar to the position of every one of us who is attracted by false material beauty. The girl mentioned about had a beautifully developed material body in accordance with the desire of her mind. But in fact, she was apart from that temporary material body and mind. She was in fact a spiritual spark and so also was lover who attracted by her false skin. Mundane intellectuals and atheistics however, are deluded by the outward beauty and attraction of the relative truth, are unaware of the spiritual spark, which is both truth and beauty at the same time. The spiritual spark is so beautiful that when it leaves the so-called beautiful body, which is in fact, is full of stool and omit, no one wants to touch that body, even if it is decorated with a costly costume. We are all pursuing a false relative truth, which is incompatible with real beauty. The actual truth, however, is permanently beautiful, retaining the same standard of beauty for innumerable years. That spiritual spark is indestructible. The beauty of our outer skin can be destroyed in only a few hours, merely by a dose of a strong purgative. But the beauty of truth is indestructible and is always the same. Unfortunately, mundane atheists and intellectuals are ignorant of this beautiful spark of spirit. They are also spiritual sparks and they are ignorant of the relationships between the sparks and the fire, which take the form of transcendental pastimes. When those pastimes are displayed here by the grace of the Almighty, foolish people who cannot see beyond their senses confuse those pastimes of truth and beauty with the manifestations of loose tool and omit described above. Thus, in despair, they ask how truth and beauty can be accommodated at the same time. Buddhists do not know that the whole spiritual entity is the beautiful person who attracts everything. They are unaware that he is the prime substance, the prime source and the fountainhead of everything that we. The infinitesimal spiritual sparks being parts and parcels of that whole spirit are qualitatively the same in beauty and eternity. The only difference is that the whole is eternally the whole and the parts are eternally the parts. Both of them, however, are the ultimate truth, ultimate beauty, ultimate knowledge, ultimate energy, ultimate renunciation and ultimate opulence. Although written by great mundane poet or intellectual, any literature which does not describe the ultimate truth and beauty is but a store of loose tool and omit of the relative truth. Real literature is that which describes the truth and beauty of the absolute. So here what we see, uh, <coughs> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati explains about the mundane people, how they are trying to enjoy the materialistic body. So uh, in our preaching, we tell students, there was one German scientist few years back, he analyzed a dead body. So usually it is mentioned from a dead body, some items we get such as iron, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, and water. So how much the cost comes is barely 210 rupees. We can imagine the value of our material body uh, in material world, people, they are taking so much care. So also, <clears throat> one time, Prabhupada, he was telling about Akbar and Birbal. 
and in that story what prabhupada explains that one time akbar he asked birbal is there in any end <clears throat> to the sex attraction between men and women so what birbal told uh, there is never there will never be an end unless one is spiritually realized so akbar he wanted birbal to show a practical lesson through a practical lesson so birbal he said okay give me some time so after some time birbal he came to akbar and he told okay please come with me but also bring your young daughter with you so this way birbal he escorted akbar and his daughter to a old man who was about to leave his body so when they entered the house what birbal he told the dying man yes here the badsha the king has come to see you but unfortunately that old man he saw the daughter of akbar and he could not take out his eyes from akbar's daughter and birbal he told akbar badsha just see where is looking he is not looking at you he is looking at your daughter so this way akbar could realize yes unless one is spiritually realized he can't understand and also one time prabhupad he was in paris and there where he was staying at one hotel from the top he could see that a good number of elderly old men were going in a bar and he asked his servant yes what is happening where these people elderly people are going so that servant he told prabhupad they are going to a bar where liquor is being served and where there is a young woman that dance so kapil dev if he tells his mother attraction between man and umer women are the basic principles of material existence and in one purport prabhupad writes that in material world pleasure is ultimately manifested in sex attraction between man and woman the man lives simply to be attracted by woman and the woman lives simply to be attracted by man that is the basic principle of material life as soon as these attractions are combined people become more and more implicated in material existence so prabhupada explains sex pleasure the whole world is moving under its spell and a materialist cannot work at all without this motivation so what we see is sex is the motivation behind which today's material world is running so prahlad maharaj he told his father grahat anda kupam that as long as one is living in the material world in a household life his one is always absorbed in just looking out for the household things and that's why a person completely immersed in household things is called griha medi whereas a devotee of the lord uh, who is serving the lord and where the lord is central he is the center in the house uh, for such a person the house is like vaikuntha bhaktiru thakur in one of his bhajan he writes je dine grihe bhajan dekhi grihe te golok bhaye so also in the uh, bhagavad gita 18th chapter uh, krishna explains uh, what today the similar verse comes in bhagavad gita 1854 brahma bhuta prasanna atmana sochate nikanchati sam sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhaktim labate param a uh, one who thus transcendently situated at once realizes supreme brahman and becomes fully joyful he never never laments or desires to have anything he is equally disposed towards every living entity in that state he attains pure devotional service unto the lord so also bhakti ratha sorry uh, rup go swami he writes in bhakti ratha amrasindu there is one nice verse uh, he mentions yah asya harir dase karmana manasa gira niklash jo api avastha hu jeevan mukta sa uchchate so anyone who by his actions mind and words lives only for the transcendent loving service of lord is certainly a liberated soul even though he may appear to be in a condition of material existence so jeevan mukta means a uh, one who is free from all uh, materialistic entanglements and today material world what we see uh, people are they are caught in so many networks we have today's world uh, what we see uh, we are completely across in uh, this telephone network mobile network there are so many networks 
uh, but a devotee who is completely free from all this entanglement, Rup Goswami explains in Nectar of Instruction, Vacho Vegam Manasko Prodha Vegam Jiva Vegam Utropasta Vegam Etan Vegan Yo Vishesta Dhira Sarvam Apima Prutvinna Sishya Shisha. So what he explains, a sober person who can tolerate the urge to speak, the mind's demands, the actions of anger, the urges of the tongue, belly and janitry, is qualified to make disciples all over the world. That is what he mentions here about a devotee, how he is qualified. And if we read Chaitan Charitamri, Chaitan Bhagavat, there are uh, endless pastimes of Chaitan Mahavar's <coughs> devotees. Uh, like there is a Meen Ketan Ramdas, then Gadadhar Das, Saran Thaku. Uh, if we read their pastimes, they were in such a highly elevated position. They were completely absorbed in the pastimes of the Lord. So there is one nice pastime in uh, Sri Sampradaya. So if we go to Ranga Kshetra, Rangana, uh, this is like uh, when Ramanujara was living in this material world. So what happened there? Every day they used to take the deities of Ranganath in the Palkri, Palki, the small deities. So one time what happened? Ramanujacharya, he saw one person by Dhanur Das. Uh, he was holding an umbrella on a woman. Her name was Hemabam. And her eyes were very beautiful. And here the Lord's Palki was going on, but this fellow was only staring at the woman and he was protecting her from the sunlight. So when Ramanujara, he saw what this fellow is doing, so he went near to Dhanur Das and he told Dhanur Das, why don't you come with me for some time? So Dhanur Das, somehow he handed that umbrella to that woman and he told her, I'll be back in a short time. So Ramrucharya, he took uh, Dhanur Das all the way to the temple premises. He took him to the inner chambers where the Aarti of the Lord was going on. And he completely took him so close to the Lord. And he told the Pujari, why don't you take the lamb near to the Lord? Let him take, let this Dhanur Das take the darshan of the Lord. And when Dhanur Das, he saw the Lord, when he saw Ranganath, he was completely mesmerized by the beauty, the eyes of Lord Ranganath. And he was completely a changed person. So later on, he was initiated by Ramanujacharya. So this way, when we release the service of the Lord, the beauty of the Lord, we take association of Lord, Gradually, we can come up all these material demands. So now we'll just see what our Acharya speak on this verse. Sridhar Swami explains the reason why a person is free from delusion and has the mind fixed in transcendence is now being given by Lord Krishna. The words, word sparsheshu means sense pleasure and those attached to them are called sparsha. But one whose mind is unattached and is withdrawn internally ceases to crave fear and desire for indulging in sense, in objects of the senses. Such a person attains the sublime and serene bliss that is nature of the Atma or soul. Having attained the wonder of Atma Tattva or realization of the soul, one continuously identifies with the Brahman by being immersed in, the, in this consciousness and experiences never-ending bliss. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, he explains, his mind is not attached Asatatma, to the happiness of sense objects, Dhyas Parsheshu, since he experiences in the soul, Atmani, happiness from having attained Paramatma. He then attains that happiness permanently, Akshaya, since in constantly releasing the sweetness, he does not release uh, lower things. Then <clears throat> Balde Vidya Bhushan, he writes, this verse describes that a person realizes his own Atma and then Paramatma. 
when a person is not attached to experiencing the objects of the senses realizes his own nature and experiences bliss he then attains samadhi in parmatma uh, brahma yoga yuktatma and attains indescribable happiness which is an experience of great bliss akshaya sukham so madhvacharya he explains that this was lord krishna uh, again clarifies yoga or the science of the individual consciousness attaining communion with the ultimate consciousness and <clears throat> with ultimate consciousness and how this relates to equanimity of actions without any other desires internal or external only the person who relishes and reveals in the atma or eternal soul is alone eligible for realization of the brahman or the spiritual substratum perceiving all existence and the bliss accompanying him the communion of the atma is the same as the communion of the brahman for they both possess the same eternal nature and the only way this communion can be attained is through meditation or yoga no other way so ramanujacharya he explains here lord krishna describes the reality for the person who desists from attachment to anything except the atma or eternal soul and who derives all pleasures exclusively from their internal relationship with the atma relinquishing relinquishing all desires for sensuous material enticements and instead delighting in brahma yoga or the science of the individual consciousness attaining communion with the ultimate consciousness by realizing the spiritual substratum pervading all existence such a person attains sukham akshaya or imperishable happiness so this way today what we see uh, krishna here he has explained uh, further symptoms of a self realized person how he is being fixed in a krishna consciousness uh, how he loses sense for and a taste for sense pleasure and prabhupada writes that the test of spiritual realization is that one can work with great vigor without sex pleasure which he avoids and also prabhupada mentions the highest pleasure in material world is sex pleasure and prabhupada explains spiritual realization and sex pleasure they go ill together prabhupada writes a krishna conscious person is not attracted by any kind of sense pleasure due to his being liberated soul so this is what should be uh, our understanding uh, when we understand that yes who is on a higher level so hari krishna so almost uh, now we are left with just 2 minutes so any devotee has any query question they can ask any, any questions or comments please you can ask unmute yourself and ask so actually there is some de defect with my camera i can't come up on this line so i can hear if somebody has some questions they can put the question Uh, okay i think all are content no problem so we'll thank you very uh, much hari shri prabhupati bhagavad gita ki hari krishna hari krishna thank you very much prabhu dadan dadan hari krishna